Our culture is on a headlong pursuit of this thing called happiness. Look at what some have said about it. Whoever said money can't buy happiness didn't know where to shop. Some cause happiness wherever they go, others whenever they go. It isn't necessary to be rich and famous to be happy, it's only necessary to be rich. Money can't buy you happiness, but it does bring you a more pleasant form of misery. Happiness is nothing more than good health and a bad memory. Happiness is the interval between periods of unhappiness. As you can tell from the quotes we've just looked at, happiness is a temporary and elusive thing in life. I'd like to talk to you about the happiness myth on today's show. Hi, I'm Mark Warren, here at Directions for Living. There seems to be a lot of effort in our world today to discover happiness. People search for it in all kinds of places. So where is happiness? It's not in pleasure. Lord Byron lived a life of pleasure if anyone did. He wrote, the worm, the canker, and grief are mine alone. It's not in money. Jay Gould, the American millionaire, had plenty of that. When dying, he said, I suppose I'm the most miserable man on earth. Not in position and fame, Lord Beaconsfield enjoyed more than his share of both. He wrote, youth is a mistake, manhood a struggle, old age a regret. It's not even found in military glory. Alexander the Great conquered the known world in his day. Having done so, he wept in his tent and said, are there no more worlds to conquer? Down through the years, I have heard a lot of people use their own personal search for happiness as an excuse for what I call bad behavior. Let me give you an example told to me from a pastor friend of mine. A Christian man, very active in his church, meets a woman in a store which he occasionally shops. The lady is quite cordial and they strike up a friendship. Eventually, they exchange email addresses and begin corresponding. The messages ultimately become passionate. One day, the man informs his wife that he is leaving her. He claims to have found the love of his life and has come to savor a happiness that has been unrivaled in previous years. He believes God wants him to be happy. And this new relationship seems to be the epitome of his dreams. The immorality is justified with the rationale of happiness. God wanted him to be happy. God wanted him to be happy. I too have heard even Christians excuse their bad behavior with this rationale that it is all right to do, say, or think anything as long as it brings happiness. What's worse, they pull out the God card to justify all of it. So I was curious, does the Bible say that God's ultimate goal for us, his creation, is to be happy? I searched the Bible from cover to cover, and here's what I found. Not even once does the Bible ever say that it's God's supreme goal for us to find happiness. The English word happy appears 19 different times across 18 verses throughout the entire Bible. Do you know what? Not even one of them says that God wants us to pursue being happy in our lives above everything else. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong impression about God and you. He doesn't want you to be miserable either. Instead, over and over again, you can find passages where God tells us how we can become happy, or perhaps use a better word, content. After all, the emotion of being happy, it's rather short, isn't it? Finding contentment in this life certainly is a much more worthwhile endeavor. Let me give you just one more example that illustrates the Bible's teaching about happiness or contentment. 
It's found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. There it talks about the life of a pretty famous individual in the Bible, a guy by the name of Moses. Here is what it says. By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God, rather than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater than riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. The truth is, Moses walked away from enjoyment and pleasure in order to get a great deal of happiness. In the coming weeks, I want to share with you God's secrets to finding contentment in this life. In the meantime, I would really like to hear from you. Write down in the comment section below. Tell me what things you have pursued in your life to bring happiness only, maybe to find that it didn't last as long as you thought, or that it didn't bring the kind of happiness you thought it would. And if you enjoyed today's show, how about subscribing to Directions for Living right here. Just click the subscribe button on the screen. Remember, on life's journey, you need Directions for Living.